Hey everyone, this week's video is going to be a little different. This video is like half ranting and half talking about magic cards. If you want to just hear my opinion on some cards, check out the chapters in the description or in the timeline, then skip ahead. Bottom line is, I'm debating on moving into other content for the channel. Personally, I've been finding magic products to be very uninspiring for Commander. Sometimes it gets better, but normally it seems to be getting worse. I don't have a lot of good things to say about March of the Machines or magic in general recently, which sucks. I think it's important to be constructively critical for the sake of improving whatever given topic, though I don't want to just be a Debbie Downer for people who are enjoying the recent sets, so I'll try to keep this brief. In this case, there's just so much bloat and random nonsense, it just feels like a chore to figure out where to begin. It feels like there's dozens of iterations for single cards, and now there's even iterations for the iterations of cards. This isn't exactly new, but personally I feel like it's starting to spiral out of control. It feels like the effort is being put more into how the cards look instead of how the cards play, which is a shame. I've also found it difficult to get excited for something, when by the time your 12 boxes of cards arrive in the mail from TCG Player, we're already moving on to spoilers for the next set or product. It feels like there's no time to digest and enjoy what I've seen before something else is being shoved in my face. This is my opinion, and I don't expect everyone to share it. I'm just sharing it because it's my channel. I've seen content creators talk about this, and Reddit posts, forums, etc. with a wide range of opinions. For one example, one post said they hated all the new special treatments the cards are getting. It made it difficult for them to see what's across a table because the unique or few iterations of the cards before made them easy to identify. Now they don't even know what they're playing against half the time and have to constantly ask their opponents. That same week, I saw another post which was basically the opposite. That player loved the new treatment and bombardment of new products. To them, it rekindled the awe they felt when they first started playing. Everything felt new, and it was refreshing to them to sit down and not immediately recognize everything. It sparked conversations and interactions. I'm a little bit in between, but overall it feels like too much. It isn't overwhelming, it just feels like why bother getting excited over anything? There'll be something new tomorrow. Christmas is great because it comes once a year, you know. I never thought I'd miss only getting one Commander product a year. So, with that all being said, I think I'm done with releasing weekly videos. Maybe I'll release periodic videos covering certain things that inspire me in Magic, or just cover sets as a whole. We'll see how it goes. This channel has always been a hobby on top of my hobby, but now it's a hobby just to keep up with the hobby, and I'm stuck in hobbyception. I love this game, but I think it's time to take a break, or at least a breather. So, for a small send-off, let's talk about some cards from this set. Let's start with the Precons. I'm not going to dive too much into them, but give my opinions more on the given commanders instead. Starting off with the backup red, green, and white Precon. I think this is really cool. The backup mechanic is interesting and gives the player versatility in their utility to make a wide range of plays without being completely busted. It feels like one of those abilities that really opens up the possibilities with shenanigans, but isn't so OP it's going to take over the commander meta. It's an ETB ability, so there are several ways we can abuse that value. As a casual deck, I think it'll be really fun to play around with. Shalai and Halar feels kind of busted to me, though. There's a lot of ways to not only go wide, but also add counters to your creatures in these colors. Because of this, there's a lot of burst damage you could pull off here. Not to mention, they're the ones who actually do the damage, so in fact the lifelink options are open as well. Cards like Loyal Guardian and Cathar's Crusade will be huge in this kind of deck. The Convoke deck is blue, red, and white, and I think it's pretty cool. I can't think of a dedicated Convoke commander, so it's nice to see two built into a precon. I do think it's incredibly weird that this deck doesn't have access to green. Convoke is the Celestia ability, and we're missing half that color pair. I'll put the breakdown of Convoke cards by color at time of recording on screen, but for those just listening, I'll read it off real fast. I found this breakdown on Fandom. White makes up 28.4%, blue 13.6%, black 12.3%, red 8.6%, and green 22.2%. There's cards from other color pairs and colorless also, but most notably Selesnia coming in at 6.2%. It's just wild to me to create a pair of Convoke-centric commanders and cut out the possibility of including 28.2% of the cards that use that mechanic throughout Magic's history. By cutting out green, you limit more cards from Magic's history than you add by including both red and blue combined. I just think it's a huge oversight for the design of this deck. Personally, I think it should have been a green, white, and black deck. If it still had access to blue, then it probably would be too much value potential with Simic involved. There's already a green, white, and red deck. Black has plenty of token potential and would let the player balance maybe between a cool aristocratic convoke theme. That rant aside, these commanders are awesome. The art is badass, the abilities are interesting, and they both play into a niche not often explored. 
The green, blue, and red artifact deck is sort of a meme. It felt like one of those challenges and franchise players try to set on themselves like the ladies looking left deck. I think it's funny and cool to incentivize making as many random tokens as possible. It gives all those weird cards you have in your collection a home. It's quirky and funny, but above all kind of effective. Gimbal's trample effect ensures that you'll always have utility while you build up your token base. Rashmi and Ragavan has an easy to pull off thief effect if you decide to use that as the commander instead. Gruul has gotten some insane treasure support over the last couple of years, not to mention blue is just good with artifacts. So it should be really easy to enable casting what you exile for free. Overall, they seem like cool commanders. The Orzhov precon seems interesting. Aristocrat decks always have a special place in my heart, especially Orzhov ones. Pesa Karloff has been my favorite commander for years. Moira and Tashar seem a bit lackluster because we have to exile our reanimated non-land permanent if it would leave, which turns off the Aristocrat playstyle a bit. It would be too powerful without that, but I wish it was limited in another way. I think Bermaz is sick. White has access to some token doublers to make extra incubate tokens. Being limited to Phyrexians and artifact creatures isn't a huge deal, and it's a cool tribe to play around with. There's a ton of new support for the Phyrexian creature base, so it gives those new cards a home and really opens up some upgrades for the deck. The white-blue-black deck is a knight tribal deck whose primary commander features the return of the Eminence ability. I think the Eminence ability is totally fine and awesome. It's a damn shame that Edgar ruined the reputation of this keyword so much. Though, getting value for free is powerful. Our only cost is opportunity cost. I think Edgar was overtuned, but I don't think the others were that big of a deal overall. For this commander, it's cool that it can reanimate knights from the yard, and it synergizes with the Eminence ability very well. Alenda and Azor are pretty open-ended as far as where you could take the deck for upgrades. I think it wants to be more of a hug deck like the new Heliod. Paying life to make tokens isn't a big deal. They have lifelink themselves, and we can tie in some synergy like Suture Priest to make up for it anyway. Being able to pay mana to draw cards on attack is just a nice mana sink. There are some interesting cards from the main set, but I think the precons are way more interesting. I think Drana and Levana are pretty powerful as a commander. There's no reason to make a dedicated video on this card because how powerful it is basically entirely depends on your opponents. Maybe there's some weird tech you could do to give your opponents utility creatures, then Drana and Levana would get their ability. That would be pretty funny, but mostly it's just a hate card. Most of the new Praetors are cool. Each one flips into a Saga, so adding some proliferate tech in your deck would help cycle them faster. Otherwise, they're kind of slow. Elish Norn has a board wipe built in and plays into a token strategy. Shouldered is basically budget Turgrid. Umbrisk is a new Storm Commander, but without blue. I'm not really familiar with that archetype, but people seem to be pretty excited for this card, so it'll be interesting to see on the other side of the table how he's abused. I made a video on Jin, so if you want to see my thoughts on him, check that out. I'm not really interested on the possibilities of Vorinclex. I think he's just a Timmy deck commander, but I feel like there's better options for that out there. It seems nice to be able to mill and bring some huge creatures directly on the field, but I think you'll mill a ton of other utility cards you'd rather have kept. It depends a bit on how you build the deck. You could argue you could always get them back with cards like Regrowth, but what if you mill Regrowth? That's kind of what I mean. Inga and Essica, I feel like are the Simic player's wet dream. It doesn't really matter we can only use the mana that casts creature spells, as Simic has a ton of utility built into their creature base. I feel like they'll just turn into a combo commander with people doing various shenanigans. Galta and Maverin is cool, and who cares about the token production effects? It's a 7 drop that can 2 shot opponents regardless of what format it's in. I'd worry about just giving it haste, protection, and double strike. Those are pretty much all the commanders I personally found interesting in March and Machines. I'm going to chill for a bit. I mean, in a few weeks, the Aftermath is going to release with probably more Legends, and there were 43 in this set between the main set and Precons. We also have the Lord of the Rings and the next Commander Master set coming out later this year. I am looking forward to us going back to Eldraine. I thought that set was so cool, and I love the fairy tale sort of setting. Overall, I personally hope Wizards slows down a bit. I find it hard to appreciate and revel in the products we get when they're so quickly swept aside for the next flashy thing. I hope you all enjoyed this set though. What commanders are you excited to build around? Let me know in the comments, and as always, thank you for watching. Good luck, and have fun.